الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين مدير شبكت الشيخ ياسر والإمام آسف and guests السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته generosity and cooperation and this is the life of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم who Allah سبحانه وتعالى sent as أسوتن حسنة that it is often the case that people say I don't know what you mean I'm a professor I'm trying to teach and somebody you explain a theory or a concept and they'll say I don't know what you mean it could very well be that when you read the Quran somebody could say I'm not sure what you mean in terms of how am I supposed to behave based on what you said Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent us the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who even before Nubuwa, even before prophethood alayhi salatu wasalam was known for the qualities that I will emphasize today but they were magnified exponentially of course after he became a messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I don't want you to think of generosity as just what I give away of myself, of my belongings, or specifically money, right? How many of you have been, have attended a, um, an event where you get essentially uh, held hostage for like an hour? It's called fundraising. <laughs> have you attended that, right? So oftentimes what's emphasized, right? Money, generosity, spend, spend, spend. And believe me, that's lovely. But what I will talk about today tells you of a, of a, of a being who lived on earth over 1450, 60 years ago and by whose presence we now understand what it means to be generous of spirit, to be generous of emotions and compassion, to be generous of course of wealth and to be generous even to the ones who offend you and hurt you. And as I close, I will talk about the fact that April 3rd has been designated. This is the power of social media. Some ignorant human being somewhere on earth designated April the 3rd as, I don't even know, I don't know what is it, hate a Muslim or something to do a Muslim, right? What is it? Punish a, punish, punish a Muslim, right? And then some other wise Muslim posted on Facebook, nobody else has to punish us. We Muslims punish ourselves enough. <laughs> like great post, thank you. Mashallah, I'm glad you woke up today, you know, and had a, a nugget of wisdom coming out of your social media account right so whatever that was even to his enemies even to his sworn enemies who didn't just offend him attempted to actually kill him Rasulullah did not did not show the kind of hate that any other human being would have been triggered to show he even showed generosity of love and spirit to those who hated him you know in the beginning of his dawah the Prophet ﷺ went to a place that if you and I thought about this treatment, right? So some people said, this, just this morning a sister said, oh, we were coming through the, the, the south mid, southwest of, of the U.S. after a conference and we were at a gas station and some people were offending us. And she was rightfully scared and, you know, the environment is such. But then I realized, subhanAllah, because in my mind I was thinking about this lecture, that I thought, you know, think about this. Think about the fact that you go to give a message to a people. Then they turn around and then not only somebody leaned against the lights. Is that what happened? Or did the, is this what reflects the brother's imagination? Okay, <laughs> I, was like, I was like, this is not good because they're always like, where are the brothers? Even he said, I think a sister is awake. But who did that to the lights? Somebody here? You do that? All right, okay, no, it's okay. I'll talk to you afterwards, <laughs> He's honest, he ad admitted, mashallah. So, he went to Ta'if, and he's presenting his message. These people are the ones who have been on the way of their fathers for eternity. And they are offended in return that here comes a man who is telling us to let go of our ways. The way we think society has been established. And I want you to keep this in mind. When you practice Islam, when you walk with confidence, 
When you are a humble Muslim existing in society, doing your best to be a Muslim, believe it or not, there are people who are literally shaken up inside because their social structure has been set up without God. And here you come saying that I can only succeed in my life if I am with God. There's, that's where some of that hate is coming from. They've already decided how their fathers, we call them founding fathers, had set up the nation. And here we come, confident as a Muslim. So where is the generosity of spirit? You know the, the time is short, but you know what happened. That they not only became offended, they began to abuse, verbal abuse. They began then to extend it to their progeny. They told their children to pick up rocks and to attack the Prophet, peace be upon him, until the narration tells us even his uh, sandals were soaking with the blood that was pouring from his body from the rocks that had struck him. Jibreel alayhi salam is present. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends Jibreel alayhi salam along with the angel as it is recorded of the mountains. Saying what? O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa we have seen what they have done to you essentially. If you say to us, we will crush these people between the two mountains. When you get offended, you want to talk, call the ACLU, you want to call you know, someone to know, you will post it right away. And now, the, the, it's so sad. As you're being offended, people are taking time to post about it. By the way, they're coming at me. They're starting to hit me, right? I'm hiding. Like, do I, do I need to go, go get safety? Like, stop texting your life to the rest of us. Yes, get help. You can say 911, I'm on the corner of so-and-so. He is hurt, he's bleeding. Emotions are at their rawest, at their rawest when you've been struck. And he says, subhanAllah, no, don't touch them essentially. How do we know? Perhaps from their progeny, the same people who are now throwing stones at me, generosity of spirit, throwing stones at me. Maybe after them and after them and after them will come some who actually worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and practice this way that I'm talking about. Another scholar said to me, I actually said it in a lecture, that they think that it was a descendant of the Ta'if, the people of Ta'if, who reached the, what we now call the Indian subcontinent of India, Pakistan, and Bangladesh, that area, that it was one of their descendants who also came and brought the message of Islam. Can you imagine this? So your momentary generosity, because how long is that conversation? Hey, Ya Rasulullah, we can crush them between the two mountains. He says, no, uh, 10 seconds, 20 seconds, 10, 20, 30 seconds. But that momentary moment of generosity of spirit extends beyond generations for people to know at all the time. Hold your emotion in check. Be generous towards those who offend you. And we move on. He was very prone. People would come to give gifts. And he would want to give gifts to others. There was no one who asked of him who he did not give. There came a time after the Battle of Hunain. One of the Bedouin Arabs came to him and asked him to give him some of the wealth. And subhanAllah, on that day, at that time, that they had, they didn't ha he didn't have much with him. Sorry, no, he did, they did have a lot of wealth there. But clearly, clearly, this is a situation whereby you are now finished fighting. You are talking about the sacrifices of everyone around. And how did he ask? How did this person ask of, the, of Rasulullah He was wearing, the narration says, a shawl or a cloth that was coarse. You know, sometimes like towels, I don't know how many of you have learned to do laundry, brothers. Um, but when you do laundry, and if the towels are in the washer after having been washed, and you don't put them in the dryer immediately, sometimes when you hold them, they feel a little bit crusted. Yours might feel crusted for other reasons if you don't like do, clean them often, right? Think about that. Do laundry, brothers. Learn to do laundry, really. 
it won't clean itself, right? So a coarse piece of fabric, he yanks at the Prophet, peace be upon him. The fabric, the yanks at it to say, give me some of this. As he yanks it, the narration says, there are marks left on the neck of the Prophet You know when you're walking in these hallways, and as Imam Asif said in the Umrah and, and Hajj and all the other crowds, we are so easily offended, <laughs> right? People just pushed me. Ah. This is the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And that, that uh, yanking uh, move has left a mark on his neck. And yet, he just smiles. And he responds to the request to give. And he gives. In another case, as, as I was mentioning, a, a, an immigrant or muhajireen uh, uh, came to Prophet Sallallahu and asked to give him all of what, you know, from what Allah has blessed him with. On that day, at that time, the Prophet Sallallahu had no food or anything else to give him. He had nothing to give him. You know what he said? He said, go and buy something and tell them that it's basically on me, like I'm treating you to whatever it is you want to buy. As the man is leaving, the companions who are close by, you know, sometimes you watch people being generous and you're like amazed by it, and other times you're like, dude, you just raised your hand at the fundraiser for 10,000, you don't have two dollars, right? So you're amazed, like how are you doing this? How are you raising your hand? So they were, they basically say, Allah, this man, the same person has come to you two or three other times. Like how are, you don't have anything to give, why are you extending yourself? And then saying, give like, you know, buy in my name, basically, it's becoming like a debt, why are you doing that? And the Prophet was not pleased. They could tell from his face. Another companion stood up and said, Ya Rasulullah, give from whatever Allah has given. Essentially, give and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will provide. And the Prophet smiled. Even when he had nothing to give, he couldn't find it in his heart. Because you think about it. In an age where everyone and everything is set up, what, what do you think it tells of humanity in the 21st century? That there's a store that's actually called the container store. Like we're so greedy and hoarding there's a show apparently called like the hoarders or something that where people of the world sit there and watch as their life is full of hoardedness watching others and say oh my god I can't believe they did that that's two more things than I have that's basically what you're saying there's like two more things than I have because look at my house how much I've hoarded his generosity even spread in terms of others because it's infectious when you give and you sacrifice and you give and you give and you give those around you will give a mother came with two children to the house of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and she came and she knocked on the door asking for something she was hungry her children were hungry this is the house of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and believe it or not Umm al -Mu'mineen, Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha looks in the house and finds nothing. This is the house of the Prophet peace be upon She finds nothing to give and she scrambles and she finds three dates. Three dates. She finds nothing in the house of the Prophet but three dates sallallahu alayhi wa She brings the three dates and she gives them to the mother. There's the mother and the two children hungry and as she offers the dates the mother keeps one date and gives the other two dates one to each child one to each child when you are generous when you're living your life and modeling it those around you will be generous she could have said Ummul Mu'mineen that these are the only things we have I can just tell them we don't have anything right now we ourselves are going through a hard time she shows the generosity the mother in turn could have said, she only gave me one date, I'll just split it up and give it to them and I'll keep the other. No, the mother gives the children each one date. They are so hungry, they just, like you, imagine approaching iftar when you fasted. How Ramadan is coming in six weeks, inshallah. Please don't treat iftar as a revenge on food. 
Right? Where have you been all these hours, right? And you treat it like, and the food is like, Ya Allah, save me, right? If the food could speak. Like if I was the samosa or the baklava in your iftar, I would be scared to death watching you coming, right? Grown human beings, there should be a Nobel Prize for the hormone that is secreted at iftar time when medical doctors, lawyers, social workers, teachers who normally nurture children in the line of iftar are like this, right? You've taken all of the iftar. Can you take anything else? No, no, you don't understand. I had a long fast, right? I'm the only one that fasted for 36 hours, it seems. And here was Aisha radiallahu giving the three dates. And what does the mother do? The children eat up the dates instantly. It's like they're gone before they were given and the mother is left with the date about to feed herself. And what does she do? Because the generosity is infectious. She takes the date, splits it in two, and hands it to each of the child, leaving herself with none, only that Allah and the angels have recorded what she has done. Those who give Surah Al-Layl to give, and they give it to purify themselves. Whatever it is they're giving, they spend to purify themselves. So in closing, how do you bring this whole sort of personality of the Prophet, peace be upon him, you've heard it in different ways from the other shuyukh, in the, in the fields of generosity and cooperation. I want you to start being more conscious. We Muslims, because of our religion, were the ones who were taught mindfulness. Don't fall for this stuff when it's like somehow you know, in corporate world and put on new you know, emblems and brands and stuff like that and everyone around the world is talking about mindfulness. No, this is your religion. Your religion came out of a human being who was the best of creation, the mercy to all of creation, who went and sat in a cave reflecting upon rest of humanity. And for that reflection, and during that reflection, came revelation that then extends out until 21st century. We are now talking about Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Mindful, be mindful. How much do I need? How much do I need? What do I need? Even with our children, we have four, alhamdulillah, all of them are taught. There is your long-term savings with whatever your gifts you're getting. There is your short-term savings, short-term spending. There are your needs and there are your wants. Ultimately, what will happen? Ultimately, you will become your own being. You will leave the confines of the home and you'll have to manage being yourself out there in the world. If you have consistently been led to believe that everyone else should do for you, that everyone else should give to you, that you are the recipient and you should be the recipient and never the giver, you will have a rude awakening. You will have a rude awakening. In America alone, there cannot be the fact that Muslims exist and then we boast about six million or seven million or, I mean, it's been six million since I was growing up for Allah's sake. Think about that. And since then, I've married and I have four children, so it should at least be six million and four, right? Just think about it. I mean, I mean, and then among the state itself, we have, mashallah, I'm pretty sure at least 10 children just among us. So what does it matter if we have 10 million or 2 million or one person in America if the generosity of our spirit is not being demonstrated? If in America today we talk about food insecurity, if we're talking about the idea of people without health care and every immigrant family is pressing and sometimes dysfunctionally pushing their children to go into medicine and why is the state of health care not improving if every day and every week a new Muslim is becoming a doctor. Generosity of spirit. It's improving. We're setting up free health care through Ikna Relief and others. But it should be even much better. It should be the case. It should be the case as it was narrated by Abdullah ibn Mubarak, Hafidahullah, a beautiful soul. In the neighborhood where he was living, his neighbor was a Jewish man. And this Jewish man wanted to move. So he put his house up on sale and people came to buy and every time they came to buy, he would tell them the price and they would say, that's too much. It's too much for what this is worth in this area. And you know what? He turned to them. 
And he said, if you knew the neighbor you are getting by living here, you would pay whatever price I asked. What kind of a neighbor are we? Are we generous to our neighbors? Do they know that we're Muslim? Do they even understand what it means to be a Muslim? Do they understand the sacrifices of the generations that followed the Prophet ﷺ? We had such tremendous spirit of generosity. If you study awkaf, if you study endowments in Islam, you will find that the Quranic verses, because this session is about the walking Quran, the Quranic verses literally, literally flew off the pages of the Quran and became the reality of the people who were living there. Believe it or not, during the Ottoman Empire, the construction that was done, sometimes they would make the, 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 the walls and the, and the ends of the walls into concaves like this and like this, designs to us, beautiful to us. You know what they were thinking? It's documented. They were thinking that some of them could store rainwater so the birds could feed on the water. In Syria, may Allah restore peace and justice to the people of Syria. Say Ameen. In Syria, they documented that people had a, 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 a waqf, an endowment. That the crops and the profit of the crops would be taken to feed, to feed, listen to this. This is Islam. To feed stray animals that are in the streets with no one to feed them. Take the profits of the crops and feed these animals. Brothers and sisters, this religion of ours, we've become too selfish, too selfish, holding it to ourselves, holding it to our hearts, never letting anybody know. Believe it or not, when you stand up, as Imam Asif said for the, point, the, the, the time I listened, when you stand up and say, I put my hand to my heart to greet you, because this in my religion is more modest and respectful of me greeting the opposite gender. Believe it or not, you've stopped being selfish because the person has realized that subhanAllah, there is a, well they may not say subhanAllah, but they'll say something, right? And they'll say that there is at least somebody who is still thinking about respect and dignity. This Me Too movement, this you know, Time Is Up movement, all of the horrendous stories, whether in the Muslim community or in any other community, are partially, partially because we've stopped practicing our faith to its best and also sharing it with others. Don't let them think you're some weirdo because you don't you know, shake hands with women, somehow you're like on another extreme. No. Tell them who you are. Tell them who you are by your behavior, your akhlaq, and your character. The Prophet ﷺ literally, literally was not identifiable in a gathering. Like even here, when people walk in, there's the, 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 the stage and the table, so you know who the speakers are. When in his majalis, some of the delegations used to, used to come, and they would literally have to ask, which of you, which of you is Muhammad? Can you think about that? Which of you is Muhammad Wasallam? His beauty extended, his beauty of, of character and generosity and cooperation extended beyond him, even to his worst enemies, and I'll stop there, in the conquest of Mecca. The conquest of Mecca. Ultimately, he had returned, victorious, given the victory in his lifetime, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and the Quraysh. He could have done anything with them. See, the next time someone taunts you with something about terrorism, something about human rights in the Muslim world, remind them that whatever is going on is not from my religion, but let me tell you about my religion, that I am from the lineage and the descendant of a Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who stood and said to his enemies, La tadrib, there is no blame upon you today. No blame upon you today. It was documented what they did to his best of his companions, even to him, even to him. And yet on that day, the generosity of cooperation and of spirit said, today there is no blame upon you. He meant it. He felt it. There was no like a spinning machine. It was just who he was. Let us be more like the Prophet of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.